has been 8,276 days since my personal lockdown started. 700 of those days I spent in a bed looking up at the ceiling in my own room. How does one recover from a situation like this? At the moment, we are all globally stuck in some form of lockdown. What I'd like to share with you today is how I made it through my own personal lockdown, how I not only survived, but thrived. December the 26th, 1997, I started to regain consciousness on a wooden jetty. As I looked towards my chest, I could see these pearly drops of water lying on my chest. But the thing is, I could not feel it. I was paralyzed, locked into my own body. I could not move a thing. As always these situations, I had a rent a crowd around me. But what was quite ironic was nobody in this crowd could save my life besides me. Do you see, I was a qualified paramedic. I was the one meant to save lives, not to be saved. So how am I going to emerge from this? Am I going to emerge victoriously? Or am I going to be a victim? Because that day I not only lost my mobility, I lost my ability to generate an income. I lost my privacy. I lost who I am. We're probably all feeling like that today because we are placed in a lockdown, not because of our own doing. Well, finally, after about three years, we got enough money together to purchase an electric wheelchair. Before that, I was pushed around from room to room and if I wanted to be outside, I had to ask somebody to push me outside. Still, even out of hospital, I was still in this form of lockdown. While well, the new wheelchair arrived, I was extremely excited. Finally, I could move around with a chin-operated power wheelchair that we had to import. I could do it. I could move around indoors and outdoors. I didn't have the help anymore. The chair arrived without batteries. Well, pretty useless for electric wheelchair, I would say. And the chair was the incorrect seating. But that didn't stop me. You see, I got friends together to put in batteries in the wheelchair. And when I got in that wheelchair, I had the freedom. I could go out again. I was locked, not locked down in a certain place. But due to the incorrect seating, I ended up back in bed for another six months, looking up at the ceiling, looking down my room, there was it standing, my brand new ride, my freedom, my mobility. And I laid there and I wondered, if this happened to me, how many other people has this happened to? It's then when I got thinking, how am I going to drastically shape my future to emerge from this victoriously? How am I going to help other people so they do not have to experience what I'm experiencing. I went to the shops the other day, since we got allowed to go out these days, and you know what I saw? Was the lines of people, all standing, exactly six feet apart, everybody wearing face masks, made of cloth. There was no interaction. There was no communication. Everybody was quiet. And I thought to myself, is this really the new normal that everybody is talking about? Because to me, seeing from my perspective, that was normal. That was abnormal. Everybody quiet. We are social creatures. But who is going to create this new normal? We can't leave it to the devices of the world out there or to this pandemic to predict what is the new normal going to be. It is up to us. 
up to the people that's been caught under this lockdown to change. But before we can do this, we first have to change ourselves. Because truly, if you need to change the world, you need to start with yourself. Because that is where change starts. COVID has washed more than just the hands of this world. It has exposed the inequalities, the pain and suffering of humanity. But humanity as a whole, for the first time in its lifetime, experienced an unprecedented event that had a global impact on every single one of us. Never before have we had this opportunity to change the future for the better, where we as a global population need to overcome the greatest obstacle that all of us suffer from, and that is the way we think. You see, most of us have this victim mentality, and we can agree that all of us are suffering from it in some way or another, because we've been placed in a situation that we do not want to be in. This is disruptive change. I've watched the news and I've watched social media, as I'm sure many of you have. And what I've noticed is that there is an extreme amount of hatred out there. A lot of people are angry. A lot of people are fighting, short-tempered. We need to get rid of the way we think, the way of being a victim. Because once you're bound to a victim mentality, you're bound forever. You see, they maintain a constant victim identity and see life through victim tinted glasses. We can't be forced to do this the rest of our lives. But there is a way to get out of this right. I know I've done it. I've been there, I've laid in bed, looked at the ceiling and wondered why me? What can I do to get rid of this? And the one thing that I did is I focused on how to change other people's lives. And that's what we need to do. You see, a victim mentality, the whole world is about them and their pain. But as soon as we we change the way we think to changing other people's lives, to assisting them, the more the better we will feel. And by change and giving, I don't mean capital, money or food, maybe just a little bit of your time, just lending an ear to somebody who wants to vent. That is so appreciated. What I did is I started a company 16 years ago when I realized that I couldn't find a wheelchair in my country that suited my needs. I thought, how many other people are suffering from the same thing? How many other people do not have a wheelchair that meets their needs? So I sat in front of my computer with a stick in my mouth and on my mouse and I started to design designed the ultimate all-terrain 4x4 wheelchair. For the last 16 years, we've won over nine entrepreneurial awards. I have served clients all over the globe. And a lot of times, I get asked by people, what inspires me? Well, I can give you a little example. Last night, I actually saw a few photos placed on social media by one of my customers who just received a new wheelchair. Well, it's just a wheelchair, you might think. But what was amazing in this picture was was the first time in 10 years, the wheelchair that I designed allowed this lady to stand up straight and look people in the eyes. Yes, it was a standing wheelchair. Just seeing that enjoyment in her eyes of something that I designed and her new freedom that she found, that is what inspires me. It's up to us to create the new normal. It's up to us to implement the change in other people's lives. 
the world we're seeing out there now is not a new normal. It is not normal. So everybody now watching this, staying at home in lockdown, change your victim mentality. Change it to caring. Change it to giving. And just change somebody else's little life just for once. And you'll immediately see the impact it has on your own life. This black swan event is an extrinsic factor, something we have absolutely no control over. But there are things that we can do. There are things that are in our control. You see, we as a global population have the opportunity to emerge from this pandemic and dramatically shape the new future. We will never have this opportunity again where we can correct the wrongs of the past and move forward. We need to learn from history so that we are not doomed to repeat it again. We are the ones that are going to create a new normal, not governments. There are not other people that are going to come and dictate our lives. It's all up to us this time. Let our children admire our tenacity when we had absolutely nothing. And let the future admire our willpower when we have absolutely everything again. So I ask you this, how are you going to emerge from this pandemic, from this lockdown? Will you become a victim and stay a victim? Or will you emerge victoriously? I'm Martin Brown, and I thank you for your time.